Good evening, and I've been thinking to talk to you about something different today, and it's gay scientists. Where are they? It's a very simple question. We're quite focused in this day and age on the idea of role models, role models to inspire people with what they can achieve. And you look at somebody like Olympic British diver Tom Daly, who made a YouTube video and came out as having a boyfriend and being happier than he's ever been. And it's a wonderful role model to young people growing up here in the UK that it really doesn't matter who they are and what they want out of their personal life. They can achieve at the very highest level of sport. And it's a real inspiration. And role models like that really matter. People report again and again that they go into careers because they're inspired by role models, because they see the possibilities of what they can achieve. And so to have gay role models in positions of power like that begins to show young people that it simply doesn't matter if they're LGBT. So what about science? Where are the gay scientists? So I did what I always do, um, or at least I did what my students always do, if you want to ask a question like this, and I asked Wikipedia, where are the gay scientists in the UK? And Wikipedia comes up with a list, and it looks something like this. Now, at first sight, the list doesn't look too bad. There's a number of names on there, and it uh, looks, you know, like there's a number of LGBT scientists kicking around. When you look at it in more detail, it's a little bit more disappointing, I would say. Uh, so, let's look at what these people are actually doing. So, Sir Evan Backhouse, Jane Ellen Harrison, Brian Kennedy, John Maynard Keynes, Peter Landin, W. Sprott, Alan Turing, Colin Turnbull are all dead. So that's more than half the list are already dead gay scientists. Who's actually alive? Um, well, Evan Davis is alive. He did train as an economist and has worked as an economist, and that is a type of science, uh, but really he's a journalist. He works on the Today news programme on the BBC. He's a great role model, but I wouldn't say he's a scientist necessarily. Um, Simon LeVay is semi-retired, no longer active really as a scientist very much. John Wells is fully retired and isn't active anymore and is in his 80s. Um, and that leaves one scientist, Sophie Wilson, and she's a great pioneer. Uh, she works in tech companies and is a real great role model to the LGBT community. Um, but is that it? We have one LGBT scientist that can make it to Wikipedia. Um, is that all the role models we have to show kids that they can succeed in science? So I wanted to look at it in a bit more detail. What does society value and what does the gay community value? Or at least who's high profile in society and who's high profile in the gay community? And to do that, I thought I'd compare the Time magazine People of the Year list and the independent newspaper Pink list. These are both respected publications uh, that cater to the sort of top end of the market, if you like, and both put together lists of movers and shakers in society. Time magazine is, of course, a global list of people that change the world, and independent newspaper is a specific list for mainly UK people uh, that are LGBT that are changing the world. So let's look at the outcomes. Well, if we look at the Time magazine list at the bottom, and the independent pink list at the top, I've divided this up based on the jobs people do, and it's pretty complicated, so I'm going to walk you through it and we'll see some striking conclusions about role models. So if you look at the Time magazine list, there's a whole lot of politics, shown in red, a nice chunk of science, shown in black, about 10% of the total people, arts and media, making up 20-25%, to 25%, sport, education and other things, including a member of the royal family who made it onto the Time magazine list in this particular year. Now let's look at the independent pink list and see how that differs to the Time magazine list. So the politicians and business people is a slightly smaller segment and there's far more activists and charity workers as a blend in that component and fewer active politicians and, uh, and that's perhaps not surprising because people that are shaking things up in the LGBT world are often going to be activists or working in the charitable sector. It's how change gets driven through currently. It's still a very active area of politics and being driven by grassroots organisers and activists. The one thing you really notice about the Pink List is the dominance of the arts and media, literature, uh, poetry, TV, production, film, acting, comedians. People that are in the public eye through the media are really high 
And actually, if you asked a member of the general public what kind of careers do gay people do, I bet you most people would suggest acting or design or fashion or media or art. And that's really borne out in this pink list. So is it true? Is that something that gay people really do? Or are these lists perpetuating stereotypes about gay people? Let's carry on. Sport is actually doing pretty well in the gay community. Um, you know, there's a number of sports people that have come out and they're given high profile in these lists as a way of trying to change attitudes. Uh, football, soccer here in the UK is still lagging way behind. There's no out gay footballers, but there are quite a lot of out gay sportsmen and they're being reflected well in the list. So where does this power list sort of break down? Well, it's in science. I mean, look at it, 10% of the time list are science people, tech people, mathematicians, engineers, statisticians. 1% of the activity on the independent pink list could be associated loosely with science. And I say loosely associated because there were really only two people that I could associate with science. One was a psychologist, which is a science, an academic psychologist. It is a science, but it's not one of the core STEM science subjects. And the other was a journalist, currently working as a journalist, who's been involved in technology aspects and has specialised previously in technology journalism. And that was it for the gay list, just a tiny fraction of science. So I've talked to scientists about this and I've talked to gay scientists about it and many of them say, does it actually matter? You know, there are lots of gay scientists, they say, they're all out there, our students know it, it's well known, it's, it's, is it an issue? I think it is. I think, I'm not convinced that all of our students know that there are gay scientists out there. I'm certainly pretty sure that if you asked young people what careers gay people may go into, their stereotype views would not put science on the list. And if that's a barrier to people becoming scientists and technologists and engineers and mathematicians, that's a bad thing. That's a genuinely bad thing. Now, you might ask what we can do to change this as scientists or engineers, and I might address that in more detail in another video, but there's a lot of simple things we can do. My Twitter account, for example, deals with all sorts of scientific issues. I discuss science and I have quite a lot of followers who are all scientists, but I also discuss my personal life. And part of my personal life is that I'm gay and that's fed in to my Twitter account because yeah, I am a scientist and I am gay. And that's openly there on my Twitter account. I could talk about how I feed my personal story into the outreach work that I do when I work with 16 to 18 year old school kids and how the science we do reflects some of the aspects of my personal life and I'll probably make a few videos about that in the future. And I could also talk about what we're doing at the University of York to try and make it a really accepting community to everybody, LGBT, um, minority groups, across the board. Um, there's lots of things we can do as scientists to simply be more open about who we are and to be more public about who we are. And I think it's important. Tom Daly kind of shows that. For kids, this matters. Of course it doesn't matter. Amongst the science community, who cares if I'm gay, if I'm straight, what I do in my personal life? Most people are right, it doesn't matter. But if I'm a 14 year old and I know I'm gay and I'm looking at what I want to do in my life, then I think that maybe seeing a gay scientist might make a difference. Thanks for listening.